Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, I'm going to be showing you a really simple but really effective binding spell. Now binding spells come in a whole range of different varieties. The most common binding spells are spells to bind someone to you. So if you're in a relationship with someone, binding spells are kind of a mutual thing that works to bind two people together. But there's also binding spells which bind someone from doing something, or in this case, to bind someone's negative actions. The actions that are hurting themselves, you, or another person. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Now this binding spell I have done on several occasions and have had such amazing, amazing success with it. And it is a super duper simple, easy spell that you can do with just basic items that you probably already have in your home. So for this spell, you are just going to need four items. You are going to need a set of scissors, a pen of some kind, black thread. Now this is blue, but it's only because I'm just showing you how to do the working and not actually doing the working myself. But black thread is super easy to find. You probably already have some lying around. This stuff I get either from the works in a bundle. You can also get it from Hobbycraft and it's also available online. So if you're looking for some black thread, online is possibly your best bet, but look around craft stores and hopefully you can find it pretty cheap. You're then going to want a photograph of the person you're doing the working on. Now this is obviously not a real photograph, this is just a stick drawing that I did. But what you're going to want is a small photograph. It can be this size or even smaller. You want it to be a discreet item. So the photograph should be a modern up-to-date photo because you are trying to bind current actions rather than past actions. You want to work on them currently and for the future. So you're going to want an up-to-date photograph. You are going to want a filter-free photograph. So colour filters are fine, just don't use a photo that has like a dog face from Snapchat or like the butterfly crown or a flower crown or anything like that. You're going to want it to be a natural photo of them without any kind of face alterations. And the photo also has to be only of the person you want the working to be done on. So don't use a group photo, don't use a photo with their parents or their dog. Make sure that the photo is one solely of them. Now the photo can be a physical photo, something that's been printed professionally, or it can just be a printed out photograph of the person. Just make sure it complies to those three kind of guides and you will have a useful photo that you can use for this working. I have had amazing success with this working, but I will say now that the success that you have with this working solely depends on you. How much power, how much energy and how much intention you have for this to work. The items, these simple four things, are really, really important, but these four things won't do the work for you. You can put all of the items together in the way I'm talking about, but if you don't put the energy in, if you don't have that power and that force behind the working, you are not going to see results. All of the times I have had amazing results, I have put a lot of energy into it. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience at the end of the video. But I will say, this working requires you to 100% want this person's actions to stop. This working requires you to be very emotionally driven, very energetically driven. You need to be 100% certain that you want this to happen and you need to know that this working will do it for you. If you don't fully believe yourself, if you don't fully want it to happen and if you aren't willing to put in the energy, effort and intention, you are not going to see results. So please bear that in mind. This kind of working is almost solely done on your personal power, energy and emotion. The items simply put you in the right mindset. So please be sure of that before you actually start the working because I don't want any of you to get disheartened if this doesn't work for you because you haven't put the right energy, intention, emotion behind it. So onto the working. This working is actually really, really super duper simple. 
So to start with, you are going to want the photograph. Now, I would say that you want to print the photograph off, ideally whilst you're very uh, in the zone. You want everything to be done while you're in this kind of focused zone of what you want this person to stop. So you're going to take your photograph and you're going to want to focus all of your hatred, your negativity, your frustration, your anger, whatever it is that you are feeling about this person's actions, you are going to want to focus it onto the image of the person. You want to tell this photograph its name. You want to name the person that you want the working to be done on. You want to see them and talk to them as though they were standing right in front of you. Tell them all the terrible things that they have done that have hurt other people that you want to stop. Tell them why you need it to stop, why you want it to stop. Express all of your feelings, your energy, your emotion, your anger into this picture. And this forms a link between your anger and frustration and the image or photograph in the working. So you can do this for however long you need. Just talk to them, express your feelings, tell them what it is you want them to stop, why. And then once you're ready, you're going to want to flip over the photograph. Now on the back, you're going to want to take your biro pen or whatever kind of pen you've got. And you are going to want to write their full birth name and date of birth. As long as you know it, write as much as you can if you don't know their full birth name and date of birth, but do as much as you possibly can. Now this is to link the image to the actual person. So you need to make sure that it's actually the person you're thinking of when you're doing this working. So the photo alone is really good, but if you can add a full birth name and date of birth, that is even better. So you're going to want to write that at the very top of the paper. So once you've done that, you are going to want to write what it is that you want them to stop, what it is that you want to bind in them, and then why. And as you're writing this, you are going to want to focus your intention See the person that you want this working to affect in your mind's eye. You're going to want to focus all of your energy, all of your intention, all of this frustration and anger and dislike towards them as you're writing it. So you can either write it three times across the petition or you just write one paragraph. But whatever you do, you just need to make sure that you are focused on it. Just feel that hatred and that disdain for what this person has done, whether it's to themselves, to you or to someone else, you need to really feel it and you need to write it in what you're doing. Now, when I do this, I just write kind of one big block of text because usually I'm so frustrated and angry that I just cannot focus on doing three sets of writing it. So you do whatever you can. So as you can see, I've just written a little bit of text. Now you can write this as viciously as you want. If you want to put all of your force into that pen, you go and do that. You just want to put your energy, your intention, everything that you're feeling into this while you're writing it. So once you've got your writing on the back, you are then going to want to turn it 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So for me, it would be this way, but you do it whichever way is 90 degrees anti-clockwise for you. You are then going to want to sign your name across it. It can be once, it can be three times, whatever you think works best. And do this with some real intention. This is you signing your energy to this working. That You know that this is going to succeed. You know that this is what you want. You're going to want to sign it with purpose, with intention, that you want this to happen and you will make it happen. So like with the writing of the petition, if this is really angry and frustrated and has a lot of physical force behind it, you do whatever you need to to put your energy into this. So you'll end up with something that looks like this. It's quite crisscrossed, quite scruffy, and that is completely fine. It doesn't need to be super neat. It doesn't need to be super nice. It can be however you want it to be and however it turns out. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is that you put your energy into it, and that's all that matters. So once you have written it, you are going to want to fold it in half. 
Now you can do this however you want. I tend to fold it so that the photograph image is inside. That way if you miss a section on the binding and someone sees the working, they are not going to know necessarily what you're doing or who you're doing it on. So I tend to like folding it photograph in so you have the writing on the outside. So while you're doing all of this, you are going to want to be thinking of your intention, feeling it, like feeling it literally through you, all the anger and frustration and desire for this negativity to stop. You are going to want to feel it like coursing through you and into this working. Once you've folded it, you're then going to want to roll it. Now, I always roll away from me because you want this working to stop something. So you don't want to attract it. You want to get rid of this negative action. So you're going to want to roll it away from you. Now, my rolls aren't like rolled like um, a type cigar or something. I mean, like, this is how I do it. It creates like a flat, squished kind of roll. It doesn't need to be like super round and super neat. You just do what you have to do just to get it to this kind of size. Now, once you've done this, you are going to want to take your black thread. Now I'm using blue in this case solely because I'm not actually doing this working. It's, this is just an example and blue is all I had. So you're gonna to want to take your thread. Now some people will use all of this if the image is bigger, but if your image is like as small as mine is, I don't like wasting the thread. So I'll only use as much as I need and I will keep it on this kind of spooly thing till I'm done and then I will cut it off it so I'm not like wasting loads of thread. So you're going to take your black thread and you're going to want to loop it over the edge of the photograph. You are then going to want to start binding it, wrapping it. Now you can do this towards you or away from you. I would just do it whichever way you can get it tightest. So I know that for me, I have to do this towards myself to keep it like really secure and tight. But whichever way you find works best for you, you do that. Now while you're binding, you need to be focusing on binding that negativity. So I enter into a trance almost while I'm doing this. So I will be repeating the person's name, their date of birth, and then what you want to bind. You want to be putting all of your hatred, your anger, your disdain, your distaste for this person's actions, the fact that you want it to stop, to end. You're gonna to wanna to put all of that into this while you're doing it. You need to act as though the thread is you and the petition in the photograph is the negativity that belongs to the other person. You are physically binding them. You are taking control of this situation. You are the one dominating them to stop what they are doing. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm chanting something, Jane Doe, the 31st of October, 1970, I bind your negativity against you so that you may never hurt me or anyone else that I know through your negative actions. I bind you, Jane Doe. I bind you, Jane Doe. I bind you, Jane Doe. The 31st of October, 1970, your hateful negative actions have caused pain to others. I bind these actions from this moment forth. So until I undo this binding, your actions are bound against others so that you may never harm anyone else, you may never hurt anyone else. Jane Doe, 31st of October, 1970, I bind your negativity, I bind your actions, I bind you, I bind you, I bind you. And as you're doing it, you will find that you end up in this like trance, that you end up not saying words anymore. You just start making like random noise. The noise that should be words ends up becoming just random noise. Now you can start with like a really complex words, like a really long winded sentence explaining it. And by the end, you're probably gonna end up with, I bind you, I bind you, I bind you, I bind you. Or you might even go a step further and just end up making just humming sounds. It depends how deep into trance you go, but you're gonna want to bind this really, really tightly. Like you are gonna want to properly put pressure on this because you are then putting pressure on them, on their situation to stop the negativity, to stop the negative actions. So once you've got something that looks a little like this, it's like a little package that's all bound up. You are then going to want to kind of loop it once over your finger 
so it goes like over the top of your finger and then pass it through so it forms a knot. Now you can do just one knot if you want or you can incorporate some knot magic into this and you're going to want to do nine knots if you want to do that so it's like you know I bind you once to stop the negative actions against this person or that person or myself. I bind this and then give the reasons why you want it bound. And you just say and express everything that you want to express as you're tying these nine knots. And once that's done, you may end up just shouting at this thing. Like I've ended up just shouting at these things before where it's like, I bind you so that you may never hurt anyone else with your actions again. May you stop everything negative that you are doing to other people and so on and so on. And you may end up just really laying into it. And then once you feel like you're ready, like, like you're done, you're then going to want to cut the thread. And that then is a finished working. You then need to keep this somewhere safe, somewhere secure. I have a cauldron on um, Caridwen's altar that I use to keep bindings. And I will go into that a little bit at the end, but you just need to keep this somewhere safe. So if that is um, like a dark drawer, that works as well. If you want to keep it in a shoebox, that works as well. If you have somewhere that's kind of representative of um, removing things, somewhere like, you know how some people have like little bin shaped objects that they use to keep like pens in on a desk? If you can actually use one of those little tiny bins as somewhere you keep your bindings to bin, to throw out that negative energy that this person is doing, you just need to make sure that you keep this. You keep it somewhere safe, but somewhere dark, somewhere hidden, somewhere private. You just want to keep hold of it so the energy can keep going. Now, after you've done the binding and you've put this somewhere safe, you may find that just you just feel so great. Like all of that negativity, all of that anger is just like lifted off you and you will feel fan blooming -tastic. You really will because I have and it feels amazing. But this working does fade with time. So it's not that you entirely lose control. It is that over time the bindings loosen so if you want this to be really intense and to keep going you're going to want to add additional bindings and put more of that energy into it as time goes on but you'll often find that bindings like this do kind of start to loosen after like six months five to six months is how i've experienced it when the bindings start to kind of unravel a little bit and then if you want to keep it going you're going to want to keep binding it. Now to get rid of one of these things you can either unbind it like physically undo all of the knots, unbind it, open up the paper and then cleanse it with smoke or something and bin it or you can just throw it in some fire. Uh, a good way of doing it is fire with alcohol. That really works to get rid of everything, but obviously don't do that if you are not doing it safely. You know, make sure that you do this really, really safely. Or you can just throw it into fire. So like a cauldron or something is really good as long as you're being fire safe and you're doing this outside. A cauldron works for getting rid of bindings like this. So just a little bit of my history with this working. I just decided one day to go through my book of shadows and to see what I could adapt that was in there for what I needed. I came across a working in there, I have no idea how long ago, it was in one of my like older books of shadows so I have no idea how old it is. And it was a working really similar to this that I adapted for my intention. So I did this when I was exceptionally emotionally charged and I mean exceptionally emotionally charged. I was possibly the angriest I had ever been in my entire life and I just wanted to find a way to get this person to stop what they were doing that was negative for themselves and for the people around them including myself. So I adapted a working with what I had. I um, printed a photograph, I got the black thread, I got everything and I sat and I was doing it and I was really laying into this wrapping, this binding, I was really going for it. And um, halfway through, Caridwen, one of my deities, came to me and she was like, hey, do you want some help? I'm like, sure, thanks, I would love some, that's really greatly appreciated, 
Thanks, Gwydwen. So um, I kept doing the working and I just kind of went into a trance and it was kind of the first time I'd ever experienced that kind of spiritual magical trance rather than like trance work or journeying. It's like two completely different things and I never realised that before. And as I was doing this working, I was really laying into this person. And because Caridwen obviously is the goddess of the cauldron, once I finished the working, I put it in her cauldron that's on her altar that's in my other room. And I felt 100% better, like more than 100% better. I felt amazing. Like all of that anger and frustration, it had just gone and it was absolutely amazing. And then the next day, the person had completely stopped their negative actions that I had been working on the day before. Not even, it might not even have been the next day. I did the working like at night, the evening before. And then the next day, someone told me that this person had completely changed. Like they had just flipped a switch. Like one moment they were doing all of this bad stuff and the next minute they just completely stopped. Like, I don't mean like a gradual phase out, I mean they completely cold turkeyed it, just stopped what I had been working on the night before. And this could have happened within hours, maybe not even the next day, it could have been hours when they stopped doing this and I just didn't know the exact time frame. And that is possibly one of the quickest workings I have ever had. Now usually I preach the whole you should really give spell work at least weeks to work, possibly months or years depending on the intention and I still stand by that because this kind of quick reaction doesn't happen very frequently, especially not my kind of workings. They aren't like instant but this was like within hours after I'd done the binding they completely stopped their negative actions and their negative actions only came back like fractionally, like four, five, six months later. And I think that's just fantastic for a spell that is as small and as cheap and as easy as this one is, to have such super quick, super effective results that manifested practically overnight is really, really amazing. But I will say that I mostly say that that is due to the amount of energy, the pain, the anger, the frustration, the hatred that I put into this working. Now, I know a lot of people say you should never do spell work angry or emotional or frustrated. I personally don't stand by that. I find that spell work is even more driven when you have the emotion behind it. So that is kind of my little story of binding work. I don't know whether anyone else has had experiences that happened this quick, but I would love to hear about them if they did. Do you do binding work like this? Because I would love to know if anyone else does binding work that's similar to this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of mini spell that I showed you today, and I really hope that it helps someone who's looking for information or guidance as to how to do bindings like this because I know that online there's a lot of confusing information. So I hope that this helps someone if you were looking for a working like this. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It lets me know which videos people like more than others so I know how to tailor my channel in the future for you guys. Don't forget to leave a comment of any questions that you want me to answer, any video ideas that you'd like to do, or if you just kind of want a bit of a chit chat down in the comment section down below, please feel free to do that. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this magical content. I put videos out every Wednesday and every Saturday at 6pm GMT? I think it's GMT. British time. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!